Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks very much indeed for joining us for the launch of 1GM. This is the Greater Manchester family coming together on a cross-community basis to say how we're going to uh, support people and businesses through what is going to be a really challenging uh, winter. Uh, and what we're launching today is uh, an initiative that will all be about supporting people using our networks in whatever way uh, we can. We recognise that um, people will be feeling pretty uncertain uh, this week as we go into the reality of Tier 3. Some people wondering about how they're going to make ends meet, people wondering about the, uh, the future viability of their, of their businesses. So we felt it was important to, to step into this, um, uh, this void and offer some uh, reassurance to people that help is going to be at hand and we're going to mobilise whatever we can uh, to carry people through. Today is actually about moving beyond the arguments that have been uh, had in recent days, which may have added to that feeling of un uncertainty. It's about creating a, a new mood, a more positive, practical mood in Greater Manchester, uh, expressing to people how we will uh, do whatever we can uh, to support them and um, spelling out some of the specifics that we, we aim to do. So just to turn to 1GM, it's going to have three, uh, three elements uh, to it. The support that we are uh, going to get from the government. Um, you're going to hear shortly about an effort from our business community, uh, led by Chris Oglesby, um, to provide extra, extra help, some added value uh, to support businesses. But also there's going to be an effort to support uh, the voluntary sector in Greater Manchester, which is struggling, and also the, the individuals that they will want to help via the Greater Manchester Mayor's uh, charity, and Diane Madal will say something uh, about that in a second. But just to <clears throat> take you through where our thinking is up to with regard to um, the support uh, that we hope to receive uh, from the government, uh, because of the decision to backdate the Tier 2 support, we are hopeful that we will have at least £65 million, pounds, hopefully more, to support people in Greater Manchester. Uh, what I wanted to say today is that it's our intention to put in place a business support package, but also to uh, do what we were saying over the last weeks, and that is to ensure that people on the lowest wages whose workplace is closed will, will, will get the support which we think they're entitled uh, to. And together with the 10 leaders of Greater Manchester, many of whom are on this call today, we are working on a support package. Also, helping people who perhaps haven't had the support that they need so far, people who are self-employed, people working in the taxi industry that have struggled because of the closure of pubs, people working uh, in the arts, the cultural sector, freelancers. I'm really pleased that Julie Hesmantage is on the call today and uh, uh, great that Julie can speak up for a sector that's really, really struggled and needs help. So that's what today is all uh, about. I'm going to introduce to you some amazing uh, speakers, some people who will represent the different walks of life uh, in Greater Manchester who are coming together under the One uh, GM banner. And I'm going to start by turning first um, to uh, our much-loved Bishop of Manchester, the Right Reverend David Walker. David. Andy, thank you very much. And, and thank you for convening this and, and being... Uh, you know, at the heart of making 1GM uh, happen. I think that's really important. As you say, we're moving on now from some of the arguments that we've had in the last week or two, but whether those arguments had the value on them is that we're concerned really in Greater Manchester, as you'd expect, about people's lives and their livelihoods. Uh, we're about how together as a community we can enable people to protect themselves, protect their families, protect their communities. But you can't do that if you can't, uh, if you can't survive, if you can't thrive, if you can't have an sufficient income coming in week by week to sustain you and so I'm really great that we grateful that we got so many people together who are, who are concerned about the well-being of everybody across Greater Manchester only if we can protect livelihoods that we'll actually have people behaving safely and protect lives. I think we've seen over these last few days uh, uh, thanks to uh, Marcus Rashford uh, and his amazing uh, feat that uh, feet in both spellings of the word we've seen how it's possible to bring people together uh, across the business, across the charity, across the faith, across the local authority communities uh, to actually see that there's not not the holiday hunger that we're fearing for many of our kids uh, over this half term break. 
that will need to go on into Christmas. It will need to go on beyond Christmas because we're a long way off for coming out of COVID yet. But I think we can harness that spirit, that spirit we've seen on one particular issue there, uh, to apply to the way that we care for one another uh, more widely across Greater Manchester. I convene the Faith Leaders Group, uh, Faith and Community Leaders, Leaders Group, uh, some of whom are on this call this afternoon. I hope they don't mind me speaking uh, on, on their behalf. But two things that are part of our offer. Firstly, we will continue to do a heck of a lot of volunteering. We will use our buildings, we'll use our professional paid staff, we'll use our volunteers to continue to serve the needs of the people of Greater Manchester through this coming winter. But secondly, we know that for many people, being able to attend their local mosque or synagogue or temple or church is really important to their own morale, to their sense of well-being, to their sense of safety. And so we're going to do what we can to keep those places open, to keep them operating in a COVID secure fashion, so that whether it's Christmas or whatever festival it is that really matters to you, that people will be able to celebrate those in a manner that's befitting and that supports them in their spiritual lives, as well as in their physical a mental life. So I'm grateful to uh, the wide range of people who are part of this call this afternoon. And I say we in the faith communities will be playing our part. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, David. Um, and it's wonderful always to have your support representing the wider faith community that's always there for us in Greater Manchester. I think today's a recognition that we're going to need to be more than the sum of our parts as Greater Manchester always tries to be. And we know we're going to have to rely on you again, but it's wonderful that you are, you are with us uh, today. You mentioned um, our very own Marcus Rashford and the focus that he's brought to uh, young people, particularly those young people who face the greatest challenges. I'm really grateful to Diane Modal, uh, another one of our own, who's been leading a young person's task force uh, for me, because I think understanding how difficult this time is for young people and the support that they need is really important and the task force has been doing that. Diane's also a member of the, um, the board of trustees of the Greater Manchester Mayor's Charity and that is going to be a focal point for uh, donations that we'll be asking for from the Greater Manchester public to support our voluntary organisations and uh, through them individuals who are going to need, need help in this, in this challenging time. So if I may, Diane, if I could ask uh, you to take the floor next. Thank you, Andy, and thank you for the opportunity to be on the call and to talk about uh, the work of the Young Persons Guarantee. And I think more recently, coronavirus has magnified the deep inequalities that exist um, across Greater Manchester. But way back in, in June, I was asked to chair the Young Persons Guarantee by Andy because everybody on the call will, will know and get a sense that uh, the mayor is relentlessly positive about young people's futures. And the Young Persons Guarantee is a simple set of commitments that focuses on improving the lives of young people across Greater Manchester with a real focus of the impact that Corona uh, virus and COVID has had on them. Um, and during the consultation period, what was very clear in listening to that were four key themes that were coming through. It was about keeping connected um, digitally, but also being able to move around safely and affordably across Greater Manchester. Staying well was the second theme that emerged and preparing for transitions uh, back into or out of uh, the world of work and education and the fourth area that uh, the guarantee focus focuses on is reducing economic inequalities and that's key really what young people have been saying to us all the time is they want uh, equal opportunities to jobs and to pathways that enable them to, to thrive and to grow and uh, you know fulfill their potential so it's really positive that we can come together under this One Manchester banner to continue to put young people at the forefront of this crisis and make sure that they are still heard. We've had a number of commitments that have come through from businesses that will speak to uh, the needs of young people, but we need more. Uh, we need more uh, in terms of being able to support those hopes and aspirations and hopefully the One Manchester launch and opportunity will enable more businesses, partners uh, and stakeholders to get involved. Um, the second area that um, I'd like to share with you briefly is, is one that Andy has already mentioned. I am a trustee of the Greater Manchester Mayor's Charity and I know there are uh, a couple of other trustees on the call as well. Um, and 
as a result of uh, you know the most recent things that have gone on, we have launched as a board of trustees a campaign under the One Manchester banner that enables uh, individuals to support the work of, of the Greater Manchester Mayor's Charity, which is to end homelessness and rough sleeping. Lots of people have already been brilliantly volunteering and donating to the charity, and we want to, to, to uh, encourage that to continue. But I suppose the message here is if, you, if you're unsure how you can help, this is a great way of being able to donate to the charity. The money goes straight to the front line, to the voluntary uh, sector. Um, and we want to encourage that donations to come through. We've launched a, a, a website which is now live. And please do go and have a look at that if you want to hear more and how you can help across the sector, which has been hardest hit. Um, thank you, Andy. I, I hope that gives a sense of, of what we are doing in terms of young people, but also the Greater Manchester Mayor's Charity. Oh, thanks so much, Diane. It, re it really does. Thanks to you and all the trustees for stepping forward. So that appeal under the 1GM banner uh, led by the charity is, is open and we are asking individuals who want to support us to, to do so. Because there's a recognition that whatever we were able to get from public funds, we're going to have to do more here. We're going to have, have to add add value and the charity are stepping forward to help us do that, building on the generosity of the Greater Manchester public, but also uh, also our businesses have agreed to step forward. It was great last week um, that immediately there was a, a suggestion from the business community that there was more that could, could be done and they were willing to, to help too. So uh, I'm going to turn now to Chris Oglesby. Chris, it was fantastic to, to, to have that positive uh, offer of, of help. I, I know that there's already a uh, a Greater Manchester Brewery uh, has launched a new beer, um, Seven Brothers Brewery. Um, guaranteed if, if, to give people a headache if I've got anything to, uh, to, to do with it, because that's uh, <laughs> what I've been, uh, been doing a lot of recently. Uh, but, um, but Chris, the business community is, is, is so important to us here. You're always there. You're part of the family. Uh, and I will hand over the floor to you. Yes, Andy, th thanks. And I guess, you know, it's what we do here, isn't it? Um, I've been working now for 30 years on in the region of uh, Greater Manchester. And there's one word that stands out throughout that time, and that's partnership. Um, we work in partnership to make the most of the opportunities when we see them um, in order that we can make the place successful. But equally, through challenging times, partnerships come together to support each other. Uh, to ensure that and to ensure we recover strongly um, and talking about challenging times these are probably the most challenging times uh, through uh, through that period um, the uh, the success of the economy and the, the society we're, we're all just completely independent upon each other and as as we've gone through that period those interdependencies have got greater so any part of any part of the chain that's challenged and it challenges us all um, and so uh, yes as we started to see, um, the uh, the fact that the support that was being provided centrally was no longer going to to cover the cost um, and and leave us with a shortfall, and that was the point that uh, the business felt it you know really was time to put to, to step forward. Um, we've been working throughout this crisis with the combined authority on a safety first approach, and it's really important that we uh, you know that, 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 that we that we continue with that. But businesses in Greater Manchester have spent millions of pounds. On, uh, on on making sure that their that their workplaces and uh, that their establishments are uh, are COVID secure, and as responsible leaders of those businesses, we're going to be focused on on three things particularly. Firstly, on raising funding uh, to help those in in need and to ensure that that ecosystem that those inter the, those interdependencies are protected as best they can um, for us for when we recover. Secondly. Um, on uh, on a, getting a clarity of message out to the public uh, to help more businesses to trade safely and sustainably through this period of restrictions. Um, through the, throughout the whole of the dialogue about uh, the move into tier three, um, you, could have, you could have been forgiven for thinking we were going back into full lockdown. And I think it's really important that we get the message out to the public that we're not in full lockdown, that, uh, that tier three has some restrictions, but there are lots of places out there trading in a COVID secure way. Uh, and it is the right place, that those are the right environments for people to meet in. And then thirdly, uh, to develop a roadmap through an evidence base to show how little transmission there is in COVID safe establishments and workplaces 
in order that we can, um, as we start to open the discussion in a few weeks' time about Tier 3 again, that we can start to navigate our way out of these uh, restrictions in a safe, responsible and sustainable way. Um, I think it's brilliant then that um, after we had the conversation, Andy, you decided to pull, to, rather than this be a business thing, that uh, that actually it's something that encompasses all parts of, uh, of society because it is all of us working together that is going to make sure we minimise the damage that's done in the short term of this and that we recover as strongly as we can. Thanks so much, uh, Chris. And through you, thanks to all members of the business community that have stepped forward uh, to help. We really uh, appreciate it. As you say, part of our aim here has got to get up, be getting out of tier three as soon as we uh, possibly can. And obviously the single best way we can do that is everyone following the guidance at all times, um, respecting the rules. And you know, I just make that appeal again to everybody uh, in, in Greater Manchester. But if I may, just kind of moving things on, uh, thinking particularly about the world of hospitality, but also of sport. I've always said this, and I'm going to say it again to embarrass him, but I, I don't think there's anybody who better embodies the spirit of Greater Manchester than the person we're about to, to hear from next. Somebody who has kind of aimed high in life and has been incredibly successful, but has never forgot where he came from and is always prepared uh, to give back. So you probably know who I'm talking about by now. So I'll now hand you over to Gary Neville. Gary. Thank you, Andy, and thank you to you, to Sir Richard, uh, I think Paul's on this call, um, and all the other council leaders uh, who have worked tirelessly over the last few weeks to represent businesses and the communities in Manchester to try and get, one, a better deal, but also gain some clarity. I think Chris has just alluded to it. Um, we're more knowledgeable about this pandemic than we were 11 months ago. Um, hospitality and leisure businesses in particular have invested heavily in COVID uh, protocols to ensure that they're secure. Uh, and the industry at this moment in time is absolutely ravaged. If the government were a coaching staff of a football team, they're changing the system every single week. They're changing the tactics every single week and the players don't quite know what they're doing and we're the players. Um, I know that from good experience in Valencia when you don't quite have sound tactics. Uh, so we're a little confused. Um, I think the people of Greater Manchester in the last few weeks have felt very proud by its leaders uh, in terms of demonstrating that resilience and that robustness and the fact that we're just not going to accept uh, what's occurring at this moment in time. We feel hard done to. I think businesses, and, and Chris mentioned partnerships, we will always work together in Greater Manchester to try and gain a better outcome. We don't want a better outcome than other places within the, the country, but we want to be treated fairly. And when I look at what's happening at this moment in time, particularly within the sectors that I'm in in sport, where we can see that in the Albert Hall in London, you can have uh, attendances for events, but you can't have uh, football fans and stadiums in secure environments when test events have been carried out, when we're seeing curfews placed on hospitality at 10 o'clock in the evening randomly. I don't know what the difference is still between 9.59 and 10.01. Um, so I think that from our point of view, this, this inconsistent and reactive direction which we're under at this moment in time is draining the confidence of us all. It's confusing us all. And we have to find a sustainable way forward. We have to put health first. We have to follow the guidelines. We have to make sure that we adapt as we have done to the protocols and processes that each of us have had to over this last nine or ten months and always remember that the, that the defence of the football team and of this situation is that we must put health first. However, it's causing a great deal of distress and harm, not moving the economy forward. We are losing jobs. People are uncertain. They're getting anxious. And it's having a great deal of impact upon people's lives away from what would be the pandemic and health situation. And I hope that in this next couple of months, the the pressure that the leaders within Greater Manchester, the business community and the people of Greater Manchester can come up with some solutions to create what would be a short and medium term sustainable way forward that we can operate under because this thing isn't going away. We're not going to be out of this in 10 minutes. We're going to be out of this in 10 months, maybe even 12 months, maybe even 15 months. It may be here for a long time. We don't know. 
So we can't stand still. Standing still is not an option. We understand the people that this virus impacts the most and we have to make sure they're supported economically. We have to make sure that they're protected. But the rest of us have to find a way to move this thing forwards and to shift forwards. Because if we stand still, then the impact of this is going to be devastating, not just today on people's lives or in the next 12 months, but maybe for the next 12 years, because the, the longer term impacts could be devastating. So I hope that you can continue to work, Andy, Paul, uh, Sir Richard, I, I've not seen Sir Richard on the call, the other council leaders within uh, Greater Manchester to fight for our cause. We will support you in whichever way we will. We know there is a shortfall of funding, which the business community of Manchester will work, I'm sure, to try and make sure that, that the support that's required for our communities is there. Uh, and that's pretty much all I've got to say. Thank you. It's fantastic to, to hear that, Gary. And thanks so much for, for joining us this afternoon. You're, you're right. Health must come first. But well, health is about more than controlling the virus. And I think we've got to have a, a kind of wider regard here for people's mental health and well-being. If people are worrying today because they've only got two thirds of their wages, we need to be able to give an answer uh, to them. And that's what today is all about. And it's why we're all so lucky to have all of you on this call. It's amazing to be on this call, actually, all of you stepping forward from your own walks of life within Greater Manchester, saying that you are there to help people. And that itself will give people a boost uh, today. Uh, so, you know, please don't underestimate the impact. And there are many of our council leaders on this call, Brenda Warrington from Tameside, uh, David Greenhouse from Bolton. I think there are others, others too, you know, we're all really here um, with one message, really, which we are one GM family and we are going to do whatever we can to help people. But we are asking people to step forward to any business, any individual. We've seen it with Marcus's campaign in recent days. You know, people are, are there, aren't they? They want to help. One GM is about bringing it together and making it as effective as possible. So thanks so much, Gary, for joining us. I want to now just to turn to uh, Karina uh, Jadhav, who's uh, got... Messages, I think, from the, the sector probably most hit by Tier 3, which is obviously the, um, the, the, uh, the, the um, venues and, um, and, and pubs that are really going to be struggling right through through this time now. So, uh, Karina, could I uh, hand the floor over to you? Yes, of course. Um, so, I obviously, um, I own a restaurant, Menagerie Restaurant in Salford. So, I'd just like to say thank you to Andy and to Sir Richard and to everyone that was involved, because I think even prior to this, we have felt that kind of one GM spirit. Um, you've spoken up for us when nobody else could. Um, so we really, really appreciate that. And I think everybody knows that hospitality has been absolutely decimated. But I think if we look back to July when we reopened, um, customer confidence was there and we spent a lot of time and money implementing procedures to ensure the safest possible spaces. And, you know, since we saw the 10pm curfew announced and then being moved into tier three, we've seen a wave of customer uncertainty and that's really hit trade again very hard. Um, and what we really want people to know is that restaurants are safe places to visit and they are COVID secure. And I think when you look at the statistics, um, that re they really reinforce that message. So that's very, very important for us to continue to be able to trade um, and for a lot of viable businesses. And when you think of hospitality, you know, it's so important to remember that it's a big ecosystem. It's not just a restaurant. It's a butcher. It's a farmer, food suppliers, um, drink suppliers, performers, events companies. You know, there's so many layers to it and so many viable businesses affected by restrictions imposed on restaurants, bars and pubs. So we can dwell on what's happened and what we don't feel is right um, and, and the frustrations of it all. But really, I think what this is all about is looking for a way forward and how we can all work together to get these viable businesses through this next six months and a year in a safe way for everyone. So we're obviously, you know, massively behind continuing to implement all of the safety measures that we've put in place. My restaurant, for example, has temperature checks on entry, we've got a one-way system, we've got contactless ordering, we're using special chemicals that destroy COVID-19 on contact. So there's so much in place and what we want to do is get that message across to um, customers. And then looking to the future, we really, we really want to see the 10pm curfew being lifted because we don't feel like it reflects um, 
the statistics or it, it's an action that's really been particularly effective. And we also want to see the support in place for our, you know, workers in particular, those on minimum wage who are struggling and psychologically very worried for their livelihoods and for what comes next for them. So what I would like to see coming from 1GM is that plan for recovery for business and some positive moves forward so that we can all start to make progress. Thanks so much, uh, Karina. And you can be assured of our support because, as you said, I think Chris said earlier, uh, tier three doesn't mean full lockdown. You know, we do need people to, to get out and support uh, support our businesses. And we know so many of you have made so many strides, really, to put in place the procedures to keep people uh, safe. And we need to get that message out that, um, uh, that you need uh, the support of the public. And I'm sure they, they will step forward. Just... Turning to, to something that is another part of the lifeblood of our city region, alongside um, our restaurants, pubs, live events, live sport, music, conferences uh, are critical uh, to us. And I just want to introduce somebody now who is very senior in the events industry, uh, who, who, who also will speak for a sector that is really struggling right now. So Liz, uh, Liz Taylor, over to you. Have we got Liz, Kevin? Um, Liz, you're on mute. You just need to take mute off. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Senior as in experience, not in age, I hope, Andy. Um, I, would, I would just like to, first of all, thank Anthony Cotton, who got an SOS this morning to come off the cobbles and support this 1GM. So thanks, Anthony, for coming into this call. I appreciate it. I think that Manchester, um, in, in, in faced with any adversity, we are an exclusive and inclusive club. And I think that we are a fine example of how, when faced with such, we all come together to support one another. Um, the, my business, which I was established in 1986, has been totally and utterly decimated. I think the most frustrating thing about it is that we just don't have any idea if and when it's going to come back. So unlike venues and restaurants, you know, the chaos and the frustration of, yes, you can and no, you can't. You can go eat till 10, you can drink till 9, whatever it is. At the moment, we cannot hold an event, whether it be somebody's wedding, whether it's a corporate event, whether it's a private party, nothing, nada. And that is um, layered. So I have third party suppliers. I can have up to 80 um, contractors on one event, production, lighting, sound, entertainment, food, uh, just a whole host. And um, Gary Neville's just sent me a really nasty thing and he's put Liz, you're on mute. mute. Well, I never. So I think he's just he's having a go. Sorry, but um, back back to I and I think that one GM is a fantastic vehicle for us all to support each other. When this happened back in March, I predicted that I would not see a live event until next September 2021, and I stand by that. I don't think that anybody's going to be able to do anything and I think in between now and then there has to be support I mean furlough was great now that's stopped you know I've had to make one member of staff redundant two of them have reduced their days because there is absolutely nothing happening whatsoever and so I you know I'm behind this I'm behind this this whole project and um and I just um I can't uh the distress and the frustration and the upset that it is causing. You know, I've, it's taken me 35 years to build up this business single-handedly. And on March the 17th, which was my birthday, it just stopped. And that's where we are. And so um, thank you, Andy. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Chris. Um, Chris and Gary have both been clients of mine, so they both know the zig. And um, let's see, you know, what we can do with it. Um, I, whatever I can do, I want to help. Oh, thanks so much, uh, Liz. And you mentioned a lot of people there working backstage in your industry who've really been hit, haven't they? And they're really, really struggling. And uh, if one and GM I, can give them some some sense of support, then I think that will be a great thing, won't it? And I think that, yeah, in, and it's the, um, 
Yes, it's a supply chain. And I think that's what's underestimated in our industry. People think an event planner rocks up with a briefcase and all of a sudden, one, two, three, you've got a gala dinner or a recognition event. But it's all the people that behind the scenes that actually create the magic. And they're the ones that are really, really suffering. Absolutely. Uh, and the same is true, of course, in, in the arts and, and culture. You mentioned Anthony Cotton. Thanks, Anthony, for, for joining us. But another one of our uh, great Manchester treasures is going to join us this afternoon. Uh, I'm going to now hand the stage uh, to the one and only Julie Hesmondal. Julie. Hey, everyone. Um, it's really fantastic to be part of the, what could potentially be a really exciting initiative, I think. Um, first of all, I'd like to acknowledge and celebrate and salute the 700 plus cultural organisations, venues, buildings and institutions across our region who've continued under extraordinarily challenging circumstances um, to keep doing the work, connecting and engaging with our wider communities and in particular our hardest to reach communities uh, across all the boroughs of Greater Manchester, keeping arts, arts accessible and keeping the door open to people regardless of their background and regardless of their socioeconomic um, status is now more important than it ever has been before. And of course, that's very much a part of the Greater Manchester Cultural Recovery Plan. Um, I'd like to recognise the, the very vital contribution of arts and culture to the mental well-being of the nation, the globe, and especially of our region. Um, and I'd, I'd ask one GM to utilise our creativity and our imagination and our innovation in helping to heal and rebuild our city and our region moving forward. And he referred earlier on to, uh, you know, the, the desperate hardship that are facing so many people in our sector, particularly um, our freelance community, so many of whom have fallen through the gaps in government support. And that's something that we're going to need a lot of help with. Um, it, it's bad now, but it only is only going to get worse. Um, and as for our, our cultural institutions, you know, a, a lot of our buildings and organisations have received money from the Cultural Recovery Fund, but by no means, not all of them. And there is a lot of anxiety about what will happen after March, how and when um, we're going to be able to open for business at, at full capacity. But in the meantime, there are venues um, open across the region, not just in the city centre, but in all the boroughs where there are incredible arts organisations and theatres, and they're open for business now. And I think that, uh, like in hospitality, we need to get a message out very strongly that we are here. We're open for business in a very, very COVID safe way. And, um, you know, that we're here and that we're surviving with typical mank, heart and swagger against all the odds. Thank you. Oh, thanks so much, uh, Julie. Ab ab absolutely. We will prevail and we will get through this and better times uh, will come back for the arts and for everybody. No doubt about it. But uh, lastly, I, I think... Um, this person now runs the most famous voluntary sector venue in the country because she hosted uh, Marcus Rashford and his mum uh, last week, uh, Fair Share Greater Manchester at Openshaw. Uh, Lucy, you and Fair Share have been doing so much to change the whole debate about food and food poverty during uh, this pandemic. Um, you've achieved amazing things working with Marcus. So um, speaking today for, for yourselves, but also for the voluntary sector, I'm now going to hand over to you. Thank you very much, Andy. And um, again, thank you very much for the opportunity to take part in, in today's um, session and um, for everything that you've been doing with the leaders of Greater Manchester to try and put a better safety net in place for us. Uh, yeah, we've got a bit of a superstar uh, international footballer who's helping to raise the profile of all of this. And um, I'm hopeful that uh, Signs look that um, pointing towards that there may well be some sort of, if not a U-turn, then certainly better things put in place for our children, not least in Greater Manchester. Um, just, just going back to a comment that was made earlier, um, just to remind everybody that uh, according to the Greater Manchester uh, Poverty Action um, people, 
uh, there are 620,000 people in were pre-COVID in severe poverty and about a quarter of those were children. So I think I'm afraid to say that for this current week, um, whilst there are some absolutely amazing initiatives going, going on, not least run by the voluntary sector, and I see uh, Joe from Mustard Tree there, they're doing some absolutely brilliant work in Ancoats and across other parts of Greater Manchester. But I, I'm fearful that um, some of our children are going to still be going hungry over this, over this half term. And what we need to make sure is that that, that doesn't happen over the Christmas period. Um, and, and going forward, obviously, and hopefully Marcus will keep the pressure up and, and help us to work on that. Um, I don't feel very qualified to speak for the whole of the voluntary and community sector, and I think I might be shot for pretending that I, I could. But um, we do have a perspective, and certainly uh, I think Emerge, which is a local environmental charity and, and social enterprise, is in a way is a bit of a microcosm, because on the one end we've got our recycling social enterprise, which has been not completely decimated, but certainly massively impacted in a negative way. And we're about to make a bunch of people redundant. Um, so any loyalty that can be given to social enterprise, not least, and, and support that whole buy local um, uh, kind of campaign and, and thinking, um, I think is it would be really helpful and needs to be built into um, the One GM initiative. Um, but on, and, and then on the other end of the scale, we've had Fair Share Greater Manchester, which is run by Emerge. It's the local arm of Fair Share. And our activities, as you say, have just absolutely um, exponentially um, expanded over the period. Um, just to flag, we have got a lockdown or a, a yeah, lockdown report. We're not calling it an impact report, but we're working on the impact stuff. But um, it's all available on our website to see. Uh, and it's a kind of bittersweet success in as much as, um, as you know, uh, demand went through the roof. So over that first four months since the initial lockdown, we did around about a thousand tonnes of food. We're averaging about 42 tonnes a week, which um, we're very grateful to Fair Share UK, who is supplying that food in through the various uh, food industry networks um, there have been some additional offers of food in the last um, week, thanks to the Rashford effect. Um, and we're doing what we can to optimise on those wherever possible. Um, and as you probably know, we're supplying surplus in-date food. It's not out-of-date stuff, just in case anybody was wondering. Uh, and we're looking at ways to maximise that. And the new warehouse that we're developing, um, which isn't yet ready, is still being refurbished. Uh, and if anybody wants to support a legacy um, uh, fundraising appeal, then, then that's something that perhaps we can point people to. Um, but certainly uh, our experience and, and our partners within the voluntary community sector through Fair Share has been, it's blown us away in terms of the um, work that people have done to, in these extremely difficult circumstances, managing the risk and, and trying to be navigating all of that COVID safe procedural stuff uh, as best we possibly can um, over, not just since lockdown, but ongoing. Um, we've seen a, a, an incredible um, effort by uh, community groups, schools and the like um, to try and turn things around and change their delivery models so that we can make sure we're getting food out to where it's needed the most. It turns out after all those years of trying to um, stop firefighting. Actually, our firefighting experience has come in quite handy. Um, in terms of the um, GM, uh, One GM initiative, um, obviously we we're extremely um, supportive and we very much welcome it. Uh, and I think it can only be of, of benefit to the wider community and voluntary sector as well. Uh, I know there's a, a, a pot of money that's been requested by. Mike Wilde is on the call there from Mac um, as part of the 60 million um, safety net of finances. Uh, and I'm sure that's the least that um, hopefully that, that, you know, there's, there's at least a small pot of money there to help some of the groups, some of whom will unfortunately probably not exist. We don't want to lose community centres. Uh, we don't want to lose any of these groups that do such a valuable job on the ground to um, support everybody in the background. Um, we want to build on our relationships with uh, the Greater Manchester leadership team across all of the boroughs, um, and we welcome the opportunity to do that going forward. So 
bring it on. <laughs> thanks. Thanks very much indeed, Lucy. Thanks to everybody. Some fantastic contributions uh, there. And just to pick up that theme, we don't want to lose any of you. And that's what One GM is about. It's protecting everyone uh, and every sector that's been represented today because you're all precious uh, to us and we want you all to be there with us when, when we come uh, through this. So um, I'll just bring it to a close there. I think that the brand for One GM might be um, about to, um, to appear on the screen. I, I hope it is. Um, just to, um, to, to summarise, um, this is the, the campaign that we want to use to bring everybody uh, together. I guess there's two messages today. One to people who are worried who are going to be affected by tier three closures. The message to, to them, individuals or uh, businesses that help is at hand. And you can see everyone rallying here for you. And that's the, the purpose of today, to give you that reassurance, to cut through some of the uncertainty that we're all feeling. But the second message is to individuals who are in a position to help and businesses who are in a position to help to step forward as well and join the network, uh, because this is the way that we will get through uh, the winter that's, um, that's coming. From our point of view, myself and the 10 leaders and the deputy mayor, we're working on a, a support package for, for, for individuals and businesses, and we will come forward with further details as soon as we possibly can. But just to recap, there will be a business support scheme, but we also want to have support for people on the lowest wages, as we said we would, uh, and we're working hard to put that in, in place. Uh, and we also want to have uh, support for self-employed and freelancers who we know have really struggled uh, this, this year. Uh, so those are the elements that we're bringing forward. But obviously, the more that people step forward to help us, the more we'll be able to do for everybody. So with that, I will uh, leave it there. Kevin, I'm going to hand back to you now. And um, I think we're going to go through some media questions. So thank you, everybody. And back to Kevin. OK, thanks very much, Andy. Just so colleagues know, there have been 100 people on this call this afternoon representing all of the sectors from the panel that you've just heard about. I'm going to move into media questions. Could I ask you please to keep your questions short and snappy? I've got a list of uh, colleagues to go to, so I'm going to limit it to one question per media organisation. If we have time, I will come back. So we're going to start with Joe Pike from Sky, please. Joe, you on the call? No, okay, to Isabel Finch from the MEN, please. Isabel? Okay, Francesca Flynn, Radio Manchester. Yes, hello, um, Hi, yeah, so, Hi. Um, so if it's all right, I'd, I'd like to ask Gary Neville um, a question just around Marcus Rashford's efforts, um, so just sort of what he makes of those efforts and how it potentially has inspired this particular collaboration, if that's OK. Um, incredibly uh, inspirational. He's a fantastic football player, um, which is very important for us Manchester United fans, first and foremost. But I think footballers uh, are, are accused quite often of not doing enough beyond their football careers to try and impact society and communities. And I can't think of a single situation where a football player has had the um, impact that Marcus has had in this last few months. And I think we'll continue to have now. What He's on a track that he can't get off, and that's the good thing about it. He's passionate about it. He believes in it. He's fighting for a cause that's impacted his own life. And it's an incredibly powerful thing when you align someone like Marcus Rashford, who is a hero to so many in this country, with um, who can carry a message beyond what others can. And I think that what he's doing at the moment is he's challenging, uh, challenging everything really. He's challenging the government. He's challenging what's right and wrong. He's making, I think, everybody realise that they can do good outside of what they do in their own lives. And it's, it's inspirational. And the fact that he's been at Manchester United on a pathway from the age of eight, nine years of age into the first team makes me even more proud because it's a journey that I went on myself. And um, that football club, whilst it's got its challenges at the moment, winning Premier League titles, it does always give an opportunity to youth. And that's incredibly important, not just to that football club, but in Greater Manchester and throughout this country that we believe in our young people. And that's what Marcus is doing. He wants them to have a chance 
he's not asking for a lot. He's asking them for he's asking for them to be um, have the very basics in life, which is <laughs> something to eat at lunchtime in the school holidays. How incredible is it that we're actually even discussing this, let alone debating it? Um, and like I say, I wish him all the best um, on and off the pitch. For those who are, I think, suggesting at times that he should um, concentrate on his football, I would probably say that he should concentrate more on the work that he's doing off the pitch because he'll have a far greater impact with that. than I remember people saying that to David Beckham 25, 30 years ago, concentrate on your football. And you look at the impact that David Beckham has had globally for English football and for England. Um, a football player should never be told just to concentrate on what's on the pitch. They should also be, uh, with the spare time that they have in their afternoons, uh, be doing the good that they are doing. And uh, Marcus is doing an incredible job. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Gary. Um, can I go back to the Manchester Evening News, please? I understand it might not be Isabel, but someone from the MEN? Hi, it's Daisy here from the MEN. Hi, Daisy. Hi. Um, can I direct this question to Andy, please? Um, I just want to ask, obviously there's there's no doubt that Marcus's efforts and 1GM are very needed at the minute, but do you worry that this is setting a precedent, this kind of local rallying, to discourage the government from providing the support that we so need? Thanks, Daisy. I mean, you could make that sort of um, argument, but I think it's going to be both, isn't it? However much we manage to get from the government, and as I say, we hope it's going to be at least £65 million. Pounds. Belatedly, it was recognised that Greater Manchester had been in Tier 2 for three months and that help was going to be backdated as a result of that. So in the end, a positive outcome. I think if, whatever the amount we got, though, there was going to be unmet need. I think there's just no doubt about that, given where we are at the moment. So, you know, it's about rallying people beyond that, isn't it, to um, to see how we can, can add... Uh, value um, and we're just blessed in this city region to have people like Marcus, like Gary, like Lucy, uh, everyone you've heard from today, people who are prepared to step forward and, and do more and you know that spirit is going to be needed now more than ever. I think this is going to be a really challenging winter for, for everybody uh, and 1GM is obviously starting now to, to put out that call and already people are answering the call. I've mentioned some of the businesses already that have, uh, have, um, have kind of stepped forward. So I think it's going to be both, uh, Daisy, given the situation that we are in. You know, hopefully Marcus will win his, uh, his, his debate, uh, his campaign, and we will be in a better position, as Lucy said, come the Christmas holidays. But we can't guarantee that we will be. Therefore, we are going to have to work really hard to uh, make sure that we... Um, close the, 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 net, the gaps in the net that people are beginning to, to, to fall through. And what I've kind of felt in the last couple of weeks when I've been doing what I've been doing and speaking up for people who sometimes get forgotten by politicians is that the need is massive, actually, and people responded to the kind of uh, the, 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 the voicing of the need for more support for people. And I, I just think it tells me that there's a lot of people out there really struggling now. And, you know, it is going to have to be a cross-community effort uh, to, to help everybody. And that's what 1GM is all about. Thanks, Andy. Um, I don't know if Joe is on the call, but is there another colleague from Sky that wants to take that question? No? OK, we move, move on then to Hannah, please, from Granada. Um. In the last few days, there was the appeal from Sasha Lord for pubs that don't serve food to partner with festival food trucks, um, which was clearly a way of trying to help those pubs to stay open. Given that the infection rate is going up everywhere in Greater Manchester, is it really responsible to encourage places that are clearly supposed to close to find ways of staying open? Is that Andy? For me, yeah, Hannah, yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean, let me make it really clear that we are not uh, encouraging people to get around the rules. Um, the, the rules now have been clearly set out in, in regulations, and the message from me will be that people must follow uh, the rules, um, both in letter and in the spirit of those uh, of those rules. So, um, you know, from my purposes, that you know, I said that at the time. You know, that we are law abiding. 
uh, here. Uh, it was never a, a challenge to the government's prerogative to set, uh, to set the rules. Um, we obviously made our kind of case around the hospitality industry and the feeling that sometimes it is being presented that it's responsible for more transmission of the virus than, than I think the evidence bears out. Nevertheless, the government in the end made its decision. Uh, so we are not you know, endorsing or condoning anyone trying to sort of bypass the rules. Uh, they are there. And, you know, as I said at the beginning, everyone needs to follow the rules. And that's the best route to getting out of tier three as quickly as possible. Thanks, Andy. Across to Charlotte Wace of The Times, please. Charlotte? No? Okay. Elspeth Keep, PA. No. Adam Kaler, Jewish Telegraph. Claire Fallon, Channel 4. Um, but I will ask one, um, if you guys can hear me. Kevin, nod if you can hear me. Yeah, we can hear we you, can Claire. Hear you, clap. On the rules, I don't know if anyone has clarity, but under Tier 3 it says that you can't socialise between households in most outdoor hospitality settings. What are the ones that aren't included in most? Does anyone actually know? I'm afraid that's for you, Andy. Well, I, I, I'll be honest and say I don't, uh, Claire, because I thought the um, position was, as we had um, more latterly in Tier 2, was that people are just uh, required not to um, uh, to socialise or mix households in, in, in hospitality settings. So I'd have to take that one away and come, come back to you. Um, I don't know um, if there's been some ambiguity imported into the new regulations that needs to be removed, but I could certainly uh, could check that for you and, and come back to you. But no, I'm, I'm not aware of hospitality settings that would uh, be treated differently. I don't feel that many can uh, offer... Um, outdoors particularly with the weather the way it is now so I, I honestly don't know what that would mean and I'd have to come back to you on that. Thanks Andy. Across to Simon at Channel 5. Hi there thanks very much my questions for uh, Andy Burnham and really your take on something that Gary Neville was talking about please uh, Mr Mayor uh, the attitude from and towards central government the way out of this how do you get out of tier three uh, are you any clearer now of how you get out of Tier 3? Is there a, a clear roadmap as far as you're concerned? No, I don't think there is, Simon, and this is a concern for us. Um, there isn't clarity about the thresholds that need to be triggered for people to then drop back down into, uh, into tier, tier 2. Um, we think it would help to have more clarity on, on what the exit route is. Part of the exit route is, of course, getting greater local control of the test and trace uh, system. Um, we are ever more clear now that the national system simply isn't working at all uh, in a way that will enable us to really bear down on those cases. There is, uh, I think, poor quality data collected by the national system. It, it takes too long for that data to be given to people at a local level. While we've been given some funding uh, through the uh, package announced last week, it's, it, it's going to require a lot of funding to, to boost those teams on the ground. We have evidence that the local approach achieves a much higher success rate when it comes to uh, contacting people, both cases of people testing positive and the friends and family of those people. Uh, and we just think this has to move quickly in this direction um, because uh, the, the system hasn't, hasn't prevented us from ending up where we are. And I think it's got to be part of, you know, a solution that's that's about an exit route from where from where we are. If we have local control of it, we would have obviously a much stronger incentive to to use that that control to to bring cases down. And it's frustrating for us to find ourselves in this position with a system that still has all of the flaws that we pointed out very very early this year, a long long a long long time ago. So it is fixable. We've got evidence already now that the local approach achieves higher results. And we would say to the government, please don't delay now. 
you know, move this system decisively in a, in a local direction. And we believe it will, it is part of the, the, the solution for areas in, in tier three and others who, who want to bear down more quickly on, on outbreaks of the virus. Thanks, Andy. Uh, across to anyone from HITS Radio. No, my final two, ITN. No, and BBC National. No, okay. I'll hand back over to Andy to, to wrap up the meeting, but thanks very much to everyone for joining, um, to the media for bearing with us, and my apologies for the hiccup at the start um, of the meeting, but over to you, Andy, to wrap up. Well, thanks, Kevin. Well, well done to you, and um, thanks, everybody, for joining. It was amazing what you said earlier, actually, about the number of people who, who tuned in uh, to this this afternoon. So thanks, everyone, uh, who has joined us. We know there's many people from the voluntary sector, uh, mention was made of mustard tree by Lucy. I know Reverend Ian Rutherford from uh, Methodist uh, community has been on the call. There are, there are just so many people I could mention that goes way beyond, obviously, the speakers that we've heard from. And thank, thank you all of you for being a part of, it, part of it. I think it says something that people want now to come together in this way, all um, parts of Greater Manchester Society under this 1GM banner. Um, you know, it gives me a lot of positivity. I think we do need to move move forward here and uh, in many ways, leave behind some of the arguments of, of last week. Um, but we also need to give that clear message to people that um, for those who are going to be struggling, we are going to be here for you and we are going to bring forward that help uh, as soon as soon as possible. So it's been um, been a fantastic lift, actually. Um, so uh, thank you, everyone, for being uh, being a part of it. Please get the word out about uh, about 1GM. More detail will come out in the coming days about the business side of 1GM, uh, more from the charity. And of course, we will be unveiling uh, the wider support package uh, within, within the next uh, 10 days, two weeks. So you know, we will be uh, coming forward with, with more detail. So look out for those uh, further announcements. But that's pretty much it for today. Uh, as I say, thanks again for joining us. And um, Let's, uh, let's do what we can, all of us, uh, to, to help people through this really tough time. Thank you, Andy. Thanks, everyone.